Yes, we've appeared out of thin internet air, and we're here today to bring you the GR, GT86, BRZ, and FRS Steering Rack Relocation Kit. That's right. We've just finished our internet world tour, the Super Lock Angle Kit, and wrapping that up in the videos you can see right here on the screen. And on said tour, we mentioned a bonus video. Wait, huh? How? Wait, give me a second. Hold on. Yep, this is the bonus video. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I think it's a big deal that we've decided to add this little cherry on top for the guys that decided to put their 8.6 through all of this ungodly subframe surgery. With just these sheets of pure love and metal, you can prevent your steering from over-centering and binding at high angles. Hot damn. The nice part is that it's ready to relocate at any moment, so be careful. Now don't let the overwhelming intensity of the relocation kit that is for sure overloading our turntable add to the fact that more information on this bad unit can be found on our website. Sitting alongside that lovely information is a template so you know exactly where you need to cut and weld as you can see us scrolling through on your screen right now. We also supply the templates with the kit itself so you have your hard copy, but if for some reason you lost or ate it, we have a digital copy on. This is what you do to reprint this bad boy. Woe is the day we ever thought we'd run you through a tech install, but here we are. After going to the product page and scrolling down like we did, click on said template sheet, and what do you know, the correct template lies before your very eyes. Go ahead and hit print, then head over to more settings in the column and set the scale to 100. And obviously smack that print button. Go ahead and get that print out from your aesthetic office setup, which for sure has underglow in it somewhere. Make sure it prints everything to scale, obviously, and not all out of whack, tiny, or extra large and measure that against the scale on the bottom side of the page, making sure you haven't made some ungodly mistake. If it measures out correctly, then you're all set there, stud. Get that sheet out onto the workbench and slap those suckers down, just like a good cook from Instagram would. And once they've been cut, a gold star is stuck on your forehead forever, and we can hop over to ripping that subframe out for said surgery. Now you can either prop your motor up to the chassis and remove the subframe from the chassis, or if you've been sitting on the dang red line a bit too much lately, you might need to pull the little engine that could out anyway, and well in our case we've pulled it out for reasons you can only imagine. After you've finished perving on your naked chassis, go ahead and mark the steering shaft to the coupling as you can see we're doing here on the screen. Then go ahead and whip that Glock into action, zapping off that coupling bolt and wrestling it off the steering rack for now. Head over to each side of the subframe and loosen and remove the hardware securing the lower control arm to the subframe and get those precious puppies out of the way for now. Then grab the Glock back again, holding it sideways and also holding the steering rack with one hand and your other hand strapped to your piece, loosen and remove the bolts that secure the steering rack to the subframe and remove said rack. Slap that subframe on the bench whilst giving it an area for going into surgery that is nice and sterilely clean, which probably does not exist in your workshop. Now let's start sticking the template pieces into their respective sections, and as you can see, we're doing that with the engine mount template here, making sure that the engine mount hole is aligned properly as well as the outer edge. Then go ahead and stick the said section, and again, making sure it's bang on, then head to the middle of the subframe, making sure the holes align there correctly as well. Now that the top side is down, we can do the back side, that's what she said. Go ahead and flip the subframe around, giving you the area you plan on sticking your post-it notes on to a good clean surface. Now go ahead and get your lower template again, stick that to where it needs to be going, lining up said holes in the edge so that it's perfect, then do the same for the other side. And lastly, don't forget that lower middle template, sticking that where it needs to go after lining up the other holes. Now something to keep in mind is that the templates need to be aligned, which is demonstrated by having this straight edge sitting at the bottom of each template. Ours looks good, so we're going to continue on, young buck. If yours is different, redo everything. Now as you anticipated, go ahead and mark alongside each one of the bottom of the templates as you can see we're doing here on the screen. Once that's been done, you can go ahead and peel those post-it notes off your subframe, then go ahead and get a straight edge ruler or that 2x4 your dad's been saving for the last 32 years, and line all those marks and sketch that out. You'll then be left with a nice and clean horizontal line that runs through the middle of your subframe. Now, flip your subframe around and just like you did on the rear, you need to do it to the top side, and mark alongside the bottom of each template. Once done, rip those post-it notes back off, and again mark with a straight edge ruler or piece of timber. So so long as it's dead straight, linking all of those marks together. Now head over to each side and continue along the contour of the subframe itself as you can see we're doing here on your very screen. Now flip the subframe slightly and continue along that contoured piece all the way to the end. 
tip the subframe slightly up and mark alongside the OEM weld. Then lastly, head to the front of the subframe, mark underneath the hole that you can see here on your screen because we're cutting that ish out as well. Now obviously, you want to do the same thing on both sides of the subframe, and once that's done, take a step back and make sure that so far, all of the lines match up and everything looks good and checks out. Remember, it's so goddamn important to measure twice and cut once. Trust me, trust me, trust me, I'm gonna say it again. Trust me, if you're hesitating and you're not sure, go stick everything back on and make sure all the templates line up properly. If you're confident that you can proceed, cut along the lines all the way around the subframe as you can see from these super sweet cut shots here. Towards the end, you wanna cut alongside the bottom of the tube and the front that we marked, which will free that sucker up. You can even throw a whole saw bit over that sucker, getting that on out of the way. And now you're in the thick of the surgery with the subframe split in two. There's not much to it, is there? While you have the grinder handy, make sure to smooth off all those sharp edges you've probably already cut yourself on and maybe sticking out, as well as the paint so that them welds can bite properly. This includes those front tubes we whole sawed earlier just to make sure they're ground flat like you can see on the screen. Now go ahead and grab your rack relocation piece and test that in place, lining up the tube with the hole. Whilst fitting this up, you can make sure the rack relocation piece sits butted up against the subframe, and as you can see in this example, we're making contact along the bottom. So like any good mechanic would, go ahead and remove the rack relocation piece, mark exactly what is making contact, then trim less than what you need, slowly, 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 until the top and bottom piece fit nice and snug together. This may be tedious as all subframes have a tolerance that they work with, but it is well worth it as you want to be accurate AF, my dudes. Because keep in mind, welding is permanent, not like that tattoo on your lower back that you can get laser removed. Once that's been done, go ahead and remove the paint just on the areas that you plan on welding to the subframe. Again, we need this clean for that maximum penetration. Before laying those dimes, you need to set up the subframe in a jig. As we have said in the past, the best jig that you would have would be your own chessis. So go ahead and throw that up and into place, then tighten and torque the subframe bolts down to the specs shown right here on the screen. Man, we're starting the torque specs early on this one. Throw the buzzed up masterpiece in and slide all the tubes through the holes as you can see on the screen, making sure for the last time that it all checks out okay. Now it's time to get your welding friend on over, probably whisper in his ear to start by tacking the tubes in their place, then tacking the rack relocation piece on all four corners to keep it in place as we both know things like to move when heated. Now in the first step after the welds have cooled is fitting the steering rack back up into place, then torquing the main bolts down to the specs shown on the screen once again. Now the reason we're doing this is because there is a chance that depending on the model of rack and the subframe itself that you may need to trim around the pinion housing as it may make contact. As you can see we're currently feeling around our steering rack for said contact and if there is none we're in the clear. But please make sure to peep this as this is very important for it not to make contact. In our case it cleared so we're in the clear to move the steering rack which we have done on the screen here by zapping those main bolts out and you can finally get to welding this sucker into place for good. Shield your eyes while this guy hopefully lays down the nicest beads you've ever seen in your life. Whilst this gentleman finishes up and you have commenced scouring Instagram and Grinder, you can proceed to confirm he did in fact sink them beads. And what you're looking for is some nice and deep penetration and discoloration of said steel. If in fact they've been sunk in like ours, as an example, pay the man and we can now paint this sucker outside of the car. Fun. Throw some paint up on the top as you can see here on your screen, you need something over the top to protect that raw metal to avoid those rust demons. Once the paint is set, refit the subframe back up again and tighten and torque it to spec for the third time. Go ahead and throw the steering rack back up in its place, also tightening and torquing that to the main specs shown on the screen. Now being that the steering column is a slip-on joint, we can go ahead and pull that down and into place forward, obviously lining up those marks you definitely put on there earlier. Throw that steering column bolt through the coupling, tighten and torque that to the specs shown on the screen. Now, before the 14 gods that my Chia lines to shun me, I must address that we are on a spiritual lock journey once again. At this stage, you're in god mode with our full Pro Town setup. 
With this being said, you probably don't have your sway bar fitted, which would give you the ultimate lock like we mentioned previously, as that pesky thing does reduce clearance. One thing to note is that the rack relocation kit actually reduces your Ackerman, making it have more parallel steering. Something to keep in mind whilst adjusting your alignment and knuckles to suit. Now go ahead and refit your subframe brace and suspension arms back up to the subframe, only if you want to have suspension. Just kidding. Please do that now. You can enjoy the extra clearance to your inners and outers now that their goofy ass is not hanging out the back and it can sit further up to avoid those binding devils. Speaking of the little devils, these guys are probably the devils and angels that sit on your shoulder telling you to do good or bad things or buy a bunch of parts or not. They also threw these videos together for your entertainment and, well, possibly knowledge. If you don't know what you're doing, please reach out to a professional and or email us so that we can get you back on track. Literally. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and DK with nothing but the world's best how-tos. We'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.